There is a reason we are called the Society of Friends. Friends reach out, they take care. They are custodians. They bring love where they go. As Quakers, we are deeply called to react against hate emanating from within our society. In general, I am fairly conscious of my identity as somebody who's Middle Eastern, whose family is Muslim, and I'm very conscious about how and when I present that identity. So especially if I'm going through an airport or riding on a plane, I'm pretty aware of you know, whether I have a book that has um, Arabic script on it. I remember a flight attendant once asked me, she complimented my necklace and it had like an Allah symbol on it and it had the prophets listed in Farsi or in Arabic writing. And uh, she asked me if that said my name. And I said no, and she asked what it said. And I froze a little bit because I felt so uncomfortable. And I thought, is she going to call like security on me? Am I allowed to answer honestly? And I find myself always navigating those places with some um, trepidation. Islamophobia is a term that was coined a few years back. Uh, to describe anti-Muslim sentiments. It's not really just Islamophobia, it's more anti-Islam sentiments and anti-Muslim hatred. Uh, so Islamophobia makes it feel like, you know, some people in the U.S. try to avoid Muslims or Islam. It's, it's more proactive, destructive forces that try to kill and discriminate and uh, destroy uh, Muslims, whether they were inside the U.S. or, or, or abroad. So, unfortunately, these anti-Muslim sentiments have been on the rise uh, since 9-11, uh, and hate crimes are on the rise since 9-11. Uh, some presidential candidate debates have uh, added fuel to the fire of anti-Muslim sentiments in the U.S. Uh, and uh, so we are living in this moment now where this is happening uh, parallel to events in the Middle East that the U.S. is also involved in so keep in mind that the destruction of Iraq and Syria also comes from the same mentality of being anti-Muslim and hating Muslims and treating Muslims as second-class human beings. The United States is not a stranger to um, fear-mongering. Unfortunately, it's been part of our contemporary history um, to fear immigrant groups and waves of immigrants who've entered the country. But we've also always had a history of people who are welcoming. Right, so alongside this uh, dominant narrative that's always occupied our political spaces, alongside that there have been faith groups and activists and um, community organizations that have received and welcomed immigrants with open arms. When we see acts of racism and Islamophobia, we should be called to reach out and say, hey, that's not right. It should be within the very DNA of Quakers to fundamentally react against the loathsome rhetoric that comes out of the highly institutionalized racism that we still have in the United States and in Europe. Yeah, many people in, in our community, the AFSC community or the Quaker community at large, um, ascribe to views um, of our um, cities and the world at large where people are treated equally and respectfully. For those who ascribe to beliefs of treating everyone equally, uh, we have to act on it. And Within our safe spaces, uh, we have to be very vocal uh, and we have to be very active in acting on these uh, principles at a time that it really matters. I think allies are incredibly important. 
And I think this really stretches across from movements that are trying to counter Islamophobia to broader movements against racism. Um, all of these movements really benefit when there are allies that are engaged. Um, and what I mean by engaged isn't leading those movements per se. What I mean by engaged is um, people who are holding their peers accountable. You know, we are living at a political moment where it really matters to act. It really matters to speak out and to um, reach out to um, American Muslims or refugees or immigrants um, to engage in discussions with groups or individuals who are disseminating anti-Muslim or anti-immigrant um, um, rhetoric. There are a plethora of ways that um, Quakers can help in all of the different Quaker communities across the United States. Wherever you are, there is probably a local Muslim community. And a Muslim community that may increasingly feel that it is isolated and fearful. Establishing links with local Muslim communities is something that I believe Quakers in particular are adept at doing and should be encouraged to do. We are not a huge movement, we are not large, but we are powerful in our own ways. And our power and our strength comes from being able to cross cultural barriers and divides.